What's going on everybody? Happy Wednesday. The week's half over, so that's good news. Um, I had a gentleman comment on one of my videos last week um, asking if I would do some coverage on the set built-in in Bash. And while I'm familiar with the set built-in, I don't have a whole lot of experience actually messing around with it. Um, I know that a lot of it's set by default and um, is it's really powerful as a built-in when it comes to your bash scripts and stuff like that and the way bash handles things so um, I told him yeah I'd go ahead and look into that I was gonna do one big video and just kind of cover the whole thing but it's there's quite a bit to it um, so I'm just gonna do an introductory video right now and kind of cover the couple things that I'm familiar with on it and then I'm gonna do a little more research on it and I'll cover some more of the flags and some more of the options that are on it but basically if we go to my second workspace here and we look at um, I'm on tldp.org and um, if we look here under chapter 33 for options um, shows the set command enables options within a script at the point in the script where you want the options to take effect, use set-o option name or, in short form, set-option slash abbreviation. These two forms are equivalent. So, and then it gives you some examples of how to do it. Um, basically, so if you're doing a bash script, I wonder if we can zoom in here. Yeah, let's zoom in a little bit. If you're doing a bash script, you got the shebang up here, and then you can do set-o verbose, which is going to echo all commands before executing. Um, set dash V is going to do the same thing. So the dash O is basically for option, and then you give it the option name, and then dash V is just the flag for verbose. So either of those are going to be exactly the same. And so basically, what that's going to do is it's going to um, echo all the commands before executing them. Um, if you want to shut it off, um, you could do the plus O option name or plus option abbreviation um, and that will shut that uh, built-in off, so that function off. So set plus O verbose is turning the echoing off. You can also run it in your shebang. So if you have your shebang up here, you can put at the end of it, you can put dash X or dash V or whatever else you want to do as opposed to adding another line in your script. Um, and so down here we have all the different flags. Um, we have the capital B, which is for brace expansion. This is a default setting. It's actually on already. So um, if you want to turn that off, you'd actually add set um, plus capital B into your script and that would turn off brace expansion. Um, we have capital C, no clobber, which is going to prevent overwriting of files by redirection. Capital D, um, list double quoted strings prefixed by the dollar sign, but do not execute commands. Dash A is going to all export, export all defined variables. Dash B is going to notify uh, when jobs running in background terminate. So when a job stops running in the background, it'll notify you. Um, dash C is going to read command. Um, dash C and then dot 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 um, means it's going to read commands from whatever. Uh, check jobs informs any informs the user of any open jobs upon shell exit. So basically, when you're closing your shell, it's going to inform you if there's jobs running. Um, dash E, error exit, uh, abort script at first error um, when a command exits with non-zero status, except if you're using an until or a while loop, um, an if, if test or list constructs. So the dash E, and I'm going to cover that one in a minute because that one I do use. Um, dash F is no glob, file expansion globbing is disabled. Glob star enables the star star globbing operator. Um, dash I is interactive, runs shell in interactive mode. Um, dash n is no exec, which reads commands in the script but does not execute them. It's just a syntax check. Um, if you do dash o, that's what I was saying up there. It's going to do. It's going to. Um, if you do dash o, you have to give it the option name. So like bash dash v was the same as bash dash o verbose. The dash v is for verbose, or the dash o. Then you have to put the verbose. And there's a few options for that, like we have so dash o option name invoke the option name mentioned. So dash o POSIX is going to change the behavior of bash or the invoked script to conform to POSIX standard. Dash o pipe fail. This is the one I use um, on occasion. Um, causes pipeline to return with exit status of the last command that the pipe returned a non-zero return value. Basically, if you have a string or a pipe, a pipe string basically it's going to run the commands through that uh, going through that pipe and as soon as it fails on one it's going to stop right there and it's not going to continue on um, dash p is privileged run the script as uh, the super user dash r is restricted runs the script in, in restricted mode dash s uh, reads commands from standard input 
uh, dash T is going to exit after the first command. Dash U is going to attempt to use defined variables. Um, use undefined variable outputs error message and forces an exit. So attempt to use, excuse me, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little tired today. So if you attempt to use an undefined variable, it's going to output an error message and it's going to force an exit. That's what the dash um, U flag does. Dash V is verbose, like we talked about before. It's going to print each command to standard out before executing it. Dash X is X trace. It's similar to dash V, but expands the commands. And then dash is going to end of options flag. All other arguments are positional parameters. And we'll cover that kind of in a second. Um, and then dash dash, unset positional parameters. If arguments given, dash dash arg1, arg2, positional parameters set to arguments. Uh, and that's one we're going to be covering as well. So if you want to see what is actually um, on by default, what you can do is if we go ahead and launch a terminal here, let's zoom in. And if you do echo and do dollar sign dash and hit enter, you can see right here, um, this is just going to give you all the flags that are or all the options that are enabled by default. So we have HIMBHS. So we have H um, which is going to be not in here, but we have I, which is interactive. And M's not in here either. So let's ha actually go over here and let's go to set built in bash. And I believe there's another um, GNU.org. This is the one other one I was looking at. So we have a couple things here, and if we have the H is going to, um, so you can see, remember, we've got H-I-M, and then capital B, capital H, and then lowercase s. So if you've got H, it's going to locate and remember hash commands as they are looked up for execution. And then I was interactive, if you recall. If we go back over here, we have the dash I for interactive. Um, so that means runs the script in interactive mode. We have M, which is job control. So C is enabled. It's C job control. Basically, all processes run in separate process group. When a background job completes, the shell prints a line containing its exit status. Um, that also allows you to start and stop things. Um, just it, it basically what it sounds like is you know job control. And then we have capital B, capital H, and S. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if we go down here, we have our yeah, keep going down here. We have capital B, which is going to be brace expansion. So brace expansion is on by default. Capital H is um, um, exclamation point history substitution. Um, this option is on by default, so history expansion. And then we had lowercase s, which is, again was going to be over on this menu here. So we have dash s for reads commands from standard input. So that's basically what we have on by default um, in Bash when it comes to set. Um, and the options and everything like that. But let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of them in action. So, um, well, not even in action. I'll explain one here. So if I launch a terminal here and we zoom in on a CD into my scripts directory, and actually, no, I think it's in my dot .local. So CD dot .local. And then I'm going to CD auto config, and then I'm going to vim into my auto install script. Um, now, this was a script I was working on for quite a while, and um, it installs my my herps lift or my old herps lift and my old berry window manager setups um, I really need to update this thing because uh, I don't use those anymore and I actually played around in it a bit and um, I've had a couple issues that people have asked me about via email so I got to get into this a little bit but um, it does still work so if you want to try it out by all means um, it's on my github and my GitLab. but if we actually do a search and do set and then do dash Right there, we have set dash EO pipe fail. And basically, like I said before, if we go back to two here, the E is error exit, so it's gonna abort the script at the first error as long as it doesn't happen as long as it doesn't happen into in an until or while loop or if or list construct. And then the O pipe fail is gonna cause a you know the pipeline to return an exit status um, at the last command of the pipe over non-zero value. So basically all this does is it runs through the script and if any of the uh, commands fail it's gonna exit the script so it doesn't continue on that's all that does set dash EO pipe fail exit script when done so that one's pretty cool um, let's go ahead and exit out of here and let's go back home let's clear the screen and let's go ahead and vim into test.sh and um, what we're going to do here is I've already got a script written up here. It just says echo hi. Um, and then let's do a couple more things. So let's do echo 
this is a test and let's do um, I don't know um, my var equals 10 echo my var so this script is just really stupid and simple but if we run test.sh you can see we get high this is a test and 10 well if we vim back into test.sh and we go up to the top here and we put set dash x and we write in quick and then we run that again what we get is it's going to tell us each thing it's doing before it does it so it says plus echo high so it's going to echo high and it says plus echo this is a test and it's going to echo this is a test Then it's going to show that it created a variable that is equal to 10 and then it's going to echo that variable and do 10 so this kind of is helpful helpful for debugging um, if you use the set x command uh, you can or built in you can actually watch things happen um, see what's going on as they happen kind of um, just kind of makes debugging a little easier so this isn't something I use real often I mean it would come in handy and I, I probably should but I just don't um, so that's one more thing that uh, set does but the one thing I wanted to discuss and kind of go over that I that I do like is basically let's do um, test var equals trying out set built-in enter and if we echo and we do dollar sign test var we can see trying out set built-in so Say I just wanted to print out one of those words there, trying out set or built in. Well, how could we do that? Well, we could uh, we could take and we could do echo, and then we could do test var, pipe that into awk, and do curly brace print, and then do dollar sign one curly brace and hit enter, and there you go. We get trying. So that's not real hard. It's you know it's still pretty simple you know and say you wanted the second one you could do print two and that's going to give you out you could do print four and that's going to get bullets in and then you obviously do print three and that's going to give you set so you can break it up like that using the alt command and if, if you've got a lot going on this is a little more difficult because four words is um, a little bit more so or four words isn't much but if you got something that's a longer string then trying to figure out which which parameter each one is is a little you know but there's another way you can go about doing this and if we do um, set dash dash and then we do test var and we hit enter now it looks like nothing happened right but if I do echo and I do dollar sign test var and I hit enter we still get the printout like you would normally but let's say I wanted to get that third word so you say we just want to print out set well that's the third position so I could do the awk command right there and I could get it or if now that we've done the set dash dash I can just do echo dollar sign three and hit enter and I get that because what that did is that set dash dash takes that variable and then just breaks it up into individual arguments each uh, each word or each string that's separated by a space is broken up into a positional parameter into its own individual argument so that's kind of cool now for this it's like okay well why would that help you out you know but there's certain things you could use it for um there's a gentleman i can't pronounce his last name it's probably super simple and i'm just overthinking it but he's got a channel his name's chris something or other it starts with an o um he's got a channel that's his name and he's got a channel films by chris um but he kind of did this and ran the um IP ADDR and he so say we wanted to run that and say we just want to get our um, IP address here this inet address what can we do there well we could do IP ADDR and we could pipe that into grep Oops, don't need that curly brace um, and look for inet well there's multiple inets right because there's one here there's inet 6 so then what we could do is we could pipe that into head and just do dash n1 so it just gives me the first one there and then we could pipe that into awk and then we could print and do dollar sign what is that two and then curly braces and then that and then hit enter and there we go now we have our IP address so 
a little bit of this stuff, you know, got a pipeline here that we got to, you know, type it, get the command and pipe it into grip and then pipe it into head and then pipe it into dog, you know, and there's probably other ways to do this, but this is just kind of the, you know, the way that I, it comes up. Um, but say we wanted to do that and we just wanted to, um, do this and I would do N1. So we're just going to go ahead and get that one, that first, that first line right here. I net. Well, what could we do? We could uh, change that if we do go up and let's do change that to net equals, and we'll do this, and then we will do this, and then we're gonna hit enter, and now we're gonna echo dollar sign net. There we go. Now we have all that. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. Let's echo that again. Um, now we could actually take an echo dollar sign net and then now pipe that into awk and then print to and then hit enter and there you go we have our IP address but we could also do set dash dash net and now if we echo dollar sign two, there we go, we get that. So see, it's real simple, it's, it's kind of cool, it breaks things up, you know, there's a million uses for this um, inside your scripts and stuff, if you wanted to break up a list of something and oh, you know, only print out a certain portion of it, but you didn't want to have to change that list every time, I guess, I don't know. So th there's just some really cool things you can do with it. Um, and that's kind of the basics of what I know about set right now. Um, like I said, I'm digging into it a little more to kind of uh, go over some of the other flags and some of the other options that you can use with set. But it's really powerful built in and it comes in handy when shell scripting and to understand what um, is actually going on when your script is running. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and yeah, dig into the, the script or into the uh, built in. Uh, the one thing you can't do is there is no man page for set. So you just have to type set dash dash help and hit enter and it will give you a lot of the flags there. Um, and kind of explain them briefly. Uh, but the other thing I'd recommend is going to uh, this right here where I said this uh, tldp.org or going to gnu.org and looking up the set command there or the set built in there. And uh, gnu.org actually tells you this built in is so complicated that it deserves its own section. Um, basically it allows you to change the values of shell options and set positional parameters. Um, does a little bit more than that too, but um, that's kind of their, their gist of it. But like I said, it's it's pretty complicated. There's a lot to it, so it's going to be a bit much for one video. So uh, that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you get a little use out of this and get, maybe get a little bit of a understanding as to what's going on with Bash and the set built in and things you can do to help you um, when you're writing your scripts. Uh, maybe do some debugging and some parameters and uh, arguments and stuff like that. So yeah, you guys have a great rest of your day, great rest of your week. Um, looking forward to the next one. By the way, I just want to give a shout out to everybody. Thank you very much. I just crossed 2,000 subs. Um, I know it's not much in the grand scheme of things compared to some of these other channels, but man, it's it's big news for me. So um, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for your support and thank you for watching. You guys have a great day. God bless.